of the Granada Community Services Park Advisory Committee. Uh, on December 12th, 2018. Six. Uh, sorry, Pat. Six. December 6th. November 6th. Sorry about that. December. December. <laughs> I'll get it right yet. December 6th, 2018, 7 p.m. Did I get that close? You got it. Okay. All right. Uh, first order of business is a roll call. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, Nancy Marsh. Susanna Cantrell. Patrick Tierney. Paul Kelsch. And I'd like for the record to mention that uh, Fran Pollard is absent as well as Michelle Dragon. Right. And we have with us staff member uh, Delia Camito from the district. Uh, we also have a special guest tonight, uh, Steve Kikuchi from k, &K Design in Kathleen Bay. Uh, all right. Uh, as a public committee, we welcome public comments. Uh, this is meeting is being recorded on local TV. Um, for new visitors to our meeting, I want to explain the sequence of meeting with public comments are accepted. Uh, the opportunity for the public to present concern, uh, concerns about park-related matters not on the agenda. Uh, have the opportunity to do so in our general participation segment of the meeting, which will be coming up immediately. If your item uh, that you'd like to make a comment on is part of the agenda, the agendas are available in the back of the room, uh, then uh, your comments should be presented during the portion of the meeting in which that uh, item is being discussed. Uh, we ask you to please fill out a comment card uh, and give that to Ms. Camito. Uh, so that I can call your name and have you come forward. Uh, public comments at any time are limited to three minutes, so we have three minutes so that uh, we can finish our business here tonight. All right, the first, uh, first item on the, uh, well, we have public general public participation. That is, again, an opportunity for anyone to present any information, any comments, any concerns, any suggestions about uh, park-related, district-related matters that is not on the agenda. Does anybody have any comments that they wish to make? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on then to uh, action item number one, which is approving the minutes from our last November 1st, 2018 meeting. Uh, committee members, uh, have you had a chance to look over the minutes? And do you have any, do you think that they're accurate? And uh, if so, you can have a motion to approve. If not, speak up. didn't get out to you sooner, but I, I haven't been able to type this week. Um, they have been reviewed by uh, your chair, by m myself, and also our general manager, so. Um, I, did, I did also read them. Oh, good, okay. Me. Uh, there were some revisions that were made um, when Chuck went through it, so just so you know. Yeah, it's captured. Yeah. Captures it. Mm -hmm. Ready to put forward a motion to approve, anyone? I uh, move to approve, uh, approve as uh, submitted. I second the motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of the motion, indicate aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. We move on then to action item number two. Uh, I want to provide some background on this item before we discuss it. Uh, first of all, 
The PAC is an advi is an advisory and can only present recommendations to the Granada Community Services Board. Uh, the board makes final decisions, and the public uh, can also present their concerns and support at a board meeting. Uh, the PAC is in the pre preliminary stages of any potential changes to the medians. No formal plans have been made. Uh, this process began in 2015 with a community survey the district had on parks and recreation priorities. That survey found 61% of respondents cited a need for small neighborhood parks. 78% of households with children cited that this need. Uh, over the last two years, citizens have presented to the PAC urging the district to create a play area on the medians. The PAC did an extensive search of suitable public lands for a play area and determined that median uh, 8, which is Balboa Circle, and I'm going to point out to everyone who's here what that is. This is Balboa Avenue and this is Balboa Circle. And also median number 7, which is this median here, Francisco Street comes in uh, at that point in time. So this search found that that was one of the better places, if not the best place, for a potential play area. Then on October 20th, the PAC held a public meeting about this area on median 7 and 8. Um, all residences along Balboa and within two blocks of it uh, of the proposed play area uh, idea um, received a flyer announcing the meeting hand delivered two weeks before and delivered to their doorstep two weeks prior to the meeting. Notices were posted around the area and online. The October 20th meeting uh, showed three drawings of concepts or ideas of potential play areas. Again, these were concepts, not proposals. Um, Steve from k and Design is here tonight and is available to briefly uh, if there is a question, he can answer questions about the concepts and what they contain. At the uh, November 1st PAC meeting, our last meeting, the committee heard a presentation on the analysis of written comments received from the October 20th public meeting. And I'm going to turn that over to Nancy if you'd explain um, the results and maybe a little of the process. Okay. Um, for this meeting, similar to the, uh, for those who came to the Burnham Park, Burnham Strip uh, meeting last June, we um, provided the drawings. We did it on the um, median number seven, so we were in that space. We posted our flyer about 10 days ahead on next door at the press, um, El Bernada, or Spangler's Market, El Bernada Cafe, El Bernada Beverage, the post office posted it on trees and posts in that median, as well as, as Paul and Owen and Pat going door to door uh, to everybody adjacent to the median, and, uh, and refreshed it about every three days on next door. We had 70, uh, and at the meeting, I think most of the PAC members were there, several board members were there to engage people who came and explain that these were concepts, answer any questions they had, and we asked them to fill out a comment form. We received 70, 70 comment forms on the day at the meeting and four additional forms in the mail or by email to the office after the meeting. We recorded, um, and for, it may just be you who wasn't here at the last meeting, if you look at the November 1st meeting on the website, the meeting packet, all of the comments are posted um, in that meeting packet. Um, I'd like to look at them verbatim so you get a feel of the emotion and passion with them and specifically what they might be worried about or what they might wish for. But um, what we did was record every single comment and then looked at whether they were uh, negative or positive. Uh, in the November 1st meeting pack, we have the definition of how positive they had to be to be positive or, or negative. And then um, uh, looked at positive or negative comments on specific amenities, uh, if they noted. I like basketball, I don't like picnic tables, and so on. Um, out of that, and I think I have I can hold up the show and tell, basically about 45 of the 74, um, we had two, just before the November 1st meeting, we got two additional comments that were negative. 
So 45 out of the 74 were positive about some kind of play area. 23 uh, were negative, uh, and negative meant basically they said, I prefer the medians as they are. They might have said, you know, clean up the trees, but basically don't add anything to them. Um, so it, it was about two to one, 61% I think positive, uh, about 31% negative, about 7% were mixed. They, uh, they said if you do anything, just do something small, but if they weren't clearly positive, they didn't get counted as positive. Uh, the most positive uh, elements were for a natural landscape, trails, um, benches, picnic tables, although we had some further comment from adjacent neighbors on picnic tables that were uh, pretty passionately negative, and a playground. Uh, the most negative comments were about a restroom. I haven't gone back and looked at our median use permit. I'm not sure we could have put a restroom on it, but, um, but uh, negative. Um, most negative for basketball, basically hard surface things, and uh, a stage. So, should I go through uh, what we moved? I, or no, I've got that. Okay. Got that. Um, the other thing that we did, just to make sure that we're paying special attention to the people who live closest to the median, was map. Happy to show. Happy to have you look at this. I'll pass it around. But we mapped where the comments were, because this is meant to be a small neighborhood play area, basically for people who are in walking distance. Um, and uh, most of the comments were people within about a three or four block radius. Um, we also mapped, defined what's considered the people close to the median that we need to pay particular attention to. Um, between uh, reviewing it with Director Warren from the board, we agreed everybody who is adjacent to those two medians and for the cross streets, a couple houses, um, I think three houses within, the, within three houses of the median. So in that space, um, with an update on the comment sheets that we got just tonight, about eight of the uh, households were negative and six were still positive. So the, the balance is a little bit more negative around the median, well, it's more negative around the median positive overall. Okay, thank you. I feel like I did that better than I did when I rushed in the last time. Uh, the report is posted like on the district website, if anybody's interested. Uh, so then on November 1st, the committee approved a motion to, and I'll read it here, proceed with the next stage of planning for a play area on median seven and eight with further public input. That was uh, approved unanimously. Uh, the committee then discussed what scale of play area should be and what elements should be included. The committee passed a motion, quote, to limit the design proposal to be smaller in scale using natural materials and incorporating existing trail elements and trails and eliminating the restroom stage and basketball half court. So that was, that was where the two motions that were passed both of them unanimously at the last PAC meeting. Pat, may I just make a, a side comment and more just for the record? Mm -hmm. I don't think it was clear at that meeting that we were taking those votes on the strength of the 72 comments we had, public comments that we had gotten before the meeting, mm -hmm. um, because there were some people who were at the meeting who were concerned that we made those motions and voted on them before we took the comments at the meeting. Mm -hmm. But we did have 74 public comments, and really that's what we were meeting. To, to talk about. So then we allowed the comments after, but it, I, from the comments on next door, um, uh, it, it wasn't clear that we were voting on the written comments and not ignoring the comments in the room. Uh, to be clear, you can argue that public meetings are not representative of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. whereas a meeting at the neighborhood park at the site is more representative. So uh, there is support, there is support there are concerns. Uh, so uh, the committee then uh, discussed what scale a play area should be and what elements should be included. Uh, and as I mentioned, there was a motion to limit it in s to small scale using natural materials incorporating existing elements and trails, eliminating restroom stage and basketball. We then heard public comments and concerns. Uh, we heard everyone who wanted to speak that night, and 
Tonight, we're going to address some of those concerns, see if we can address some of those concerns that neighbors have. Uh, so, um, after this first discussion for the PAC, first question for the PAC, uh, I'm going to open it up to public comments. Uh, but PAC members, uh, I would like you you have had a chance to review the list of neighbor concerns. We saw that last time, um, and we presented that again uh, as well. Um, are there any concerns that are missing from that list? And I wanted to address to everyone what were the concerns that were identified. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention them now. Uh, the concerns expressed on November 1st were after dark noise, basically kids partying, uh, additional trash. Sorry, sorry, but also early morning noise, kids playing. Mm -hmm. It was just basically noise. Okay, kids noise, playing. additional trash, more cars in traffic, parking issues, safety of children, visual impacts of play structures. No paving, keep it natural. Cutting or trimming trees. Uh, will it attract vagrants and homeless people? Um, would it affect dog walkers and trail users at the medians? And concern with, for not reaching out to enough residents regarding the proposal. Those were what we summarized as the main concerns that we're going to address tonight. You've got a chance to look at that. Pat, Are there could I add just two more items? <coughs> there was also concern about ongoing maintenance and also um, the liability of the homeowners. That okay. Was That's on the list. Is it? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> the last one on the list. Are there any other concerns that PAC members have that we missed? I, I mean, do people, especially it was refreshing here that mm -hmm. people are concerned about this use of tax dollars. I mean, the comments that we got tonight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's you know, yeah, what, mm -hmm. where, if they could have their choice, maybe that would be, you know, prioritizing tax dollars, which yeah. is, you know, obviously the GCSD is, has a certain realm of, you know, responsibility. Yeah, it's not, you know, they're not gonna fix the streets, but, you know, it is a concern for people have. Well, that's a good point, too, because there's a lot of things noted that we don't have any jurisdiction over or anything anyway. So I think, I don't know if we're clarified what we actually have yeah, jurisdiction that's a, yeah. over. And then as far as having a clarification on Garbage, mm -hmm. parts. Well, I think what's not clear, and, and, and as an aside, although if we've got a, any other, a basket of any other things, I, I'm starting to think about a newsletter for the first quarter where I'd like to give more background information, the, the median use permit and how that came about and what it is and is not. What is DPW County accountable for versus what GCSD is accountable for? Mm -hmm. They're accountable for the medians and trees, and a lot of people don't understand that. We'd only be accountable for the, the area on the median where we make an improvement and no other part even of the same median. So those sorts of things I think came across were, that we were confused about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had some information at the meeting, but it's hard to make sure everybody hears everything in that kind of um, public forum. But I'd like to put more of that what we learned about what people don't understand in a first quarter newsletter and hopefully get that out before we do the next public event. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that, I mean, just a general topic, tree, the trees have been ongoing. <laughs> and it's, it's like always a thing, it's like that. I mean, if it was like the GCSD was trying to take responsibility, there would be no money for anything else, I imagine. I mean, it's just too, and it's not ours now, so it's not something that, you know, that we are 
liable for. Mm -hmm. The total property tax that we get, the share of property tax that we get from district taxpayers, is, um, I did the math, it averages out to a little under $300 per ratepayer, um, and some of it is still subsidizing sewer costs. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot of money. Um, and I'd almost want to pull all the comments. I don't know if we can do this. If we could pull from the comments, verbatim, all of the comments about the trees mm -hmm. and send them to DPW because they are accountable for the trees mm -hmm. and, and hand those off so that we, we do something with that community all feedback. All I have to do is do a search under the name that word tree, tree and yeah. pull it all yeah. out. Yeah. But I think those comments should go somewhere mm -hmm. because communities are concerned about it and they're really the ones responsible. Uh, I, I'm going to ask uh, Steve with KNK on the one of the on, on the uh, C design, the C uh, drawing. Were there any trees proposed to be cut on the C design? No, there were not any trees to be removed. They were all going to be preserved. But on the other two, there would have been. There would have been, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think if one was three and one was seven. So we're not proposing cutting trees for at least a play area on medium seven if it moves forward in that direction. Uh, what I wanted to do, if there isn't any more discussion about potential concerns, I'd like to just, I'm open. and particularly for the television audience, if we could take an in order of the one that's in the um, meeting pack and just go down them, because in some of those, um, you and I and Steve had discussed some potential mitigation. But yeah, that's what we're going to do next. I just want to make sure that we have all the concerns oh, okay. of everyone yeah, first, sure. and then we can talk about okay, sorry, what our mitigation might be. On. All right, uh, let's open it up to public comment, and I have a card from Chris Johnson. Would you uh, give your address, name and address, please? Okay, uh, Chris Johnson, I uh, am on Vallejo Street in El Granada. And uh, first wanna say good people of the PAC, thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, this topic is very important to me, and I could barely make myself come here tonight. Uh, it's hard to come at seven o'clock at night when you've got family and had a long day at work. So thank you for coming out. Um, that said, uh, I've been following this since uh, uh, the fall of 2013, Measure G. Um, and this is very important to me. At that time, my son was five years old. He's now 11. Um, and so that's why I've been speaking to this. He's coming into those years that I've been concerned about and been pushing GCSD to move forward with something. So I've been to a lot of these meetings, but I have been missed a few. So I try to stay up to date, but I, I may, you know, I may misspeak here a couple times. Please uh, bear with me. Uh, I'm very disappointed uh, on the action that was approved last meeting uh, to limit the design proposal to be, quote, small in scale. We're doing something there. So you've got this list of concerns those concerns are going to be there whether it's small in scale or not, some of those concerns. Some maybe not as much, but you're still creating something there that are going to raise these concerns. So small in scale, extremely, extremely disappointing. That's uh, also, Nancy, more disappointing than that is I am offended as a GCSD ratepayer as a resident of Granada, as a parent, as a co-sider, that it's the understanding that this is meant to be a small neighborhood park within walking distance for the people just around there. I'm sorry, no, no. This is being paid for by GCSD ratepayers. It is something for the community and anybody else who wants to use it. Uh, I was offended by comments that GCSD President Leonard Warren made in the paper about comments like this is our property and you know we should be able to do this and people shouldn't tell us what to do with our property. I'm sorry. I would like us to take the higher road on that. 
if people that don't live here, who don't even pay taxes to GCSD, would like to use a facility that we have built, great. I mean, I just, that really bums me out. Because now we're talking about small and scale. And so we're, we are then like really giving a lot of weight to the people that live right around there, as your map has shown, as the walking door to door, as the handing out flyers to those people. They have paid the same amount that I do. And just because it's right there by them, it's going to hopefully move to other places as well. And I mentioned this uh, two or three meetings ago that I didn't think it was quite right that so much weight be given to the people just around there. I understand that. I'm on Coastside Design Review. I understand people's concerns that are next door. But this list of problems, concerns here, again, if I could make a similar list with you know a bunch of other things that could happen. Okay, after dark noise, kids partying. I mean, those benches that are there now, that's happening everywhere. I mean, kids partying, oh my goodness. We're gonna introduce kids partying to El Granada? Wow, I mean, you know, additional trash, more <coughs> cars and traffic, park safety of children. These kids have nothing to do using the natural resources. The, the GGNRA is less than a mile right there with dozens of square miles of trails and benches and vistas. A 16-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old can't do anything with that. They're not allowed to go off and wander off to the GCSD. And so adding more of that, and I've said this before, we have those things. What we don't have are the things that will keep kids interested and occupied and get them out of Fortnite and out of the house, which everybody says they want, and then we talk about making it small in scale. And you know what that means? That means like a tot lot. And I've said before, playgrounds, kids are timing out on traditional playgrounds at age five. If you want to build a giant cement slide or some kind of really intricate and amazing thing that can capture a 12-year-old's imagination, like a basketball court, great. That's, to me, what the GCSD Parks and Rec Authority is for. So um, my concern is that we are downsizing this on a 23 complaints. I, I, I've, my numbers are right. It was almost double the amount were for positive. So again, and here we have a list of all the concerns, but we don't have a similar list of all the, you know, the benefits that this might bring. So I'm not saying that this is being shaded in one direction or the other, but I am concerned, and I have always been, again, with comments that the current GCS president has made in public meetings about his desire to have passive recreation, quote unquote, over his dead body, or instead of active recreation. So uh, again, PAC, thank you so much. Uh, you're here, you're doing this work. Showing up is you know, 90% of life. But as Yogi Berra would say, the other 60% is getting it right. So for me, I need more than small in scale and just for the people around that medium. Okay, this, is, this can be bigger than that. This can be something that is an amazing thing, but if it gets strangled down to small in scale and a couple of benches and some trails, we really haven't done anything. And then I would join the chorus of people back in 2013 who were questioning whether GCSD can, should have parks and rec authority. If all it's gonna get us is more trails and benches, then I'm not sure that it's been worth it. Um, I hope that we can do more than that. And thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other persons want to? I could just make a comment. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, I think you were talking more about overall. Uh, tonight, the focus is on the medians. So just so you know, I, I, I understand. That's a larger thing, thing, but the okay. medians right. you know, the, are part of it. And yes, this, is, this is something that you're starting with. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the bigger things you're suggesting might be better off. Please stand up and give your name. Hi, my name's Yale Erickson. I live in El Granada. 
And you mentioned a little bit before about some of the concerns that some people have about the trees. And I thought I'd mention to you that there was an MCC meeting that happened recently where a gentleman came and spoke at a public meeting just before the meeting actually officially began. And he was very, very concerned about all the fires. And he was talking about lots of places in El Granada where we have so many trees. And he was really concerned about who's making, who's going to take care of these trees and what happens if there are fires and things like that. And I just wanted to let you know that MCC is probably or should be putting, they said they would put it on their agenda um, to looking into that a little bit, maybe have someone from the fire district come and so forth. And he looked it around at all the different trees and things like that, if a fire were to take place. And I'm not having a pin one way or the other, but I thought I'd let you folks know that this is coming up. And it's, if you don't get a chance to read about or visit the MCC meetings, you might want to check that out. Thanks. Thanks, uh, I will. I will comment. Thank you. I will comment that the uh, agreement that we have with the county does not allow fires at any of our locations. So no barbecues. Oh. You know, just it's just a, an aside. You know, we're we're talking about fires. So I wasn't talking about that. No, I was not talking about fires that would start there. I was just talking about fires that could start anywhere. And if there's a lot of trees that are untrimmed and not taken down and not maintained and so forth, that's exactly where the, how the fires are going to spread. Right. And this came up because obviously people were concerned at MCC about the fires they're seeing elsewhere in California. I mean, to the point of how people's tax dollars are being spent, the, uh, the county and DPW get a whole lot more of their property tax dollars than the district gets. And so. No, should be getting us up for that. So, no, yes. no, it wasn't in response to your so comment. Yeah. Just that you know it's coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Just letting you know. Okay. <laughs> now that you're going to do anything about it. Um, and again, we're not proposing any barbecues, and we're not allowed to have any barbecues mm -hmm. or, or fire, fires along the median. So, let's, uh, uh, seeing that there's no other public comments, uh, uh, let me uh, give some ways in which the district could. Um, these may be recommendations that we make. Uh, could mitigate or reduce um, potential adverse impacts from a player on Domino Media. Um, again, the proposals, the our discussions here are not about a firm proposal, but they're about concepts and ideas. Uh, but let's talk about some potential mitigation measures. Uh, so noise, uh, we believe it would be, I believe it would be moderate in scale. So Nancy, co-chair, and I and Delia met, and we came up with these. Uh, we feel that noise impacts would be moderate in scale. Uh, because we are considering, or one alternative is, consider, uh, is considering to sink the play areas slightly below grade and have vegetation, some vegetation screening, um, and this might uh, reduce that. Steve from k and &K, could you give us a little bit of background? What do you mean, what do we mean by sinking elements below grade? Well, we could basically depress the play areas, and we're talking about play areas only uh, mm -hmm. below the ground level, possibly having retaining walls or other things on the perimeter so that uh, generally noise travels in kind of waves. So there would be a certain percentage of the noise waves that would actually be blocked by these walls and kept to a lesser degree uh, extending outwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, shrubbery, shrubbery isn't highly effective as far as mitigating noise, but uh, it's more of an effective psychological um, thing. Yeah, and and also uh, that would address some of the people's concerns about visibility too. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful too because um, we don't want to create a situation where it's sunk too low or too screened, where security becomes an issue. Right. Monitoring the security. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are ways to have drainage <coughs> so that it doesn't become a big mud puddle. Yes, yes, there would have to be a subsurface drainage system. Right now, uh, Median 7 actually has about a, from the upper end where we're thinking about a play facility to the 
lower part, the more western part, I think there's a six or seven foot drop in grade. So you, we could actually run in a, a drain pipe below grade that would mm -hmm. allow for drainage of the play area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We also, yes. Um, my concern is maintenance. Just anytime you have, you're setting yourself up for drainage, you're going to have maintenance. That's you know, who's going to pay for that? It's well, the use permit requires us to maintain anything that we improve. So if we, if the board agrees a, an improvement, they have to agree the ongoing maintenance for it. Gotcha. And we've, uh, I've talked to several uh, landscape architect firms uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, are not in the coast side area. Um, one, uh, California Natives in Montana, maintains several parks, has a contract to maintain several parks in the area. Um, they're used to doing that. Um, if the board were to approve a contract to have them do trash service, uh, do graffiti removal, as well as uh, maintain the structures, including the drainage, that would be a potential. Uh, way of dealing with that and I think personal opinion that would have to be part of this uh, pick up trash uh, we have regular trash service we're going to get to that under trash but that would be what I see uh, happening so this would have to be a maintained area the medians right now one could argue whether they're maintained uh, and there's not a lot of maintenance there's some tree maintenance but not much beyond that so good, good point. Uh, in, in regards to noise, uh, we are thinking about recommending uh, a, a regulation that is daytime use only. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would address some of the concerns that neighbors have expressed about disruptive behavior after hours use. Uh, almost all the parks in this area have mm -hmm. a restriction for uh, more or less six to half an hour after sunrise. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that would just be for the play area itself and would not restrict, in my mind, and what we've discussed, would not restrict dog walkers from using the trail. So we're looking at any benches or seating features, the playground, the play area itself, any elements, that would be closed half an hour after sunrise mm -hmm. if it were to be approved. Uh, so, uh, the noise but, after sorry. hours might be addressed. That those. would be any benches or play areas within the, the boundaries of our improvement area. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but it would not, we would exempt dog walkers mm -hmm. and walkers. Well, it would, it would really exempt any area outside the boundaries of the right. play area. Right, we have no jurisdiction over that. Mm -hmm. We're not accepting that. Was that. that was concern someone that walking some their dog through at night, you know, should be a lot, I mean, well, some we're, not, we're not proposing to yeah. that. Yeah. Now, there were a couple of people who thought if we had signage saying you could only use it in the day, that that might apply to the whole median mm -hmm. and that would interfere with people taking their dog out for a walk. But yeah, it needs to be clear it would only not. apply to the area that we approve. Yeah. 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 Well, and it seems like the noise discussion was predominantly around when we were talking about picnic tables and kids coming in with six packs of beers after hours and causing problems then. So. If we do eliminate the picnic table, I think it would eliminate a lot. I was just thinking as we were talking, like look at some of these playgrounds, like that Moss Beach, we call it the wooden playground. I don't know if anybody's been there. Sure. You know, people will drive there, because that's such a big deal. We're talking about something that's not, but even when I go there and take my grandkids, there's not that much noise, even when there's 15 kids there. I mean, I can't imagine it disturbing, and there's homes right all along there, so I think, Maybe putting it in perspective too, I mean this is just going to be a handful of kids at various times through the day that the noise level is just not going to be. Well, well, what we could profound. do as a test, we could, mm -hmm. we could rent a jump house, <laughs> rent a jump house, the tell everybody house. that it's you know in median seven right where we want to put the park and then do like a noise test. Yeah, imagine. I mean, the Get neighbors 10 kids to yell. <laughs> Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it shows we're doing due diligence. Yeah, we're yeah. making an effort. We're also raising awareness in the neighborhood. We're providing fun. We get people to come out. Maybe they sign, give us their email, and mm -hmm. yeah. 
Fran is not here, but she lives literally across the street from the entrance to Quarry Park, mm -hmm. and, and I do walk by it often. When the weekends, when there are three birthday the parties birthday there, parties. then it's noisy. Mm -hmm. With the but, bouncy houses. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but otherwise, it's not that noisy. But it's kids, okay. it's kids my, having my, fun my noise. House, my house is located um, closer than Fran's house to a park, mm -hmm. a, a park parking lot and in Miramar. And uh, you know, the noise, we have never called the police or the sheriff in 15 years of living there mm -hmm. about noise except at July 4th. Yeah. <coughs> I think it's important to get to go through these and document them and, and respond to them particularly because these, mm -hmm. these are the concerns that came from the people who would be most impacted. But I think that they were kind of pre-set concerns, mm -hmm. kind of no matter, no matter what was on the drawings. But I think as, you know, as we continue to modify our proposals in, in response to what people were most interested in. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's like Ocean View Park and Half Moon Bay. I mean, mm -hmm. the houses are right, right next literally, to it. yeah. Right, 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 right across the fence. Yeah, there's a five feet mm -hmm. from that park. Mm -hmm. And that actually gets a, that gets a lot of kids because mm -hmm. the school's right there and then you have the school programs there. So. Uh, let's move on to the second one, disruptive behaviors after hours use. We've mentioned that we're, we would consider making it daytime use only. Uh, we would not be providing picnic tables or long benches. The idea, you know, my, I work with City of San Francisco, Parks and Rec all the time. Uh, benches uh, are being eliminated for single seating or if benches are provided, then they have uh, uh, raised uh, elements in the middle of them so people can't sleep on the ground. Right. And uh, it's interesting that Jason neighbor said that there used to be a lot of partying on that median, but as the picnic tables became decrepit, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's fallen off. And I thought, did they become decrepit? Is it because they became decrepit or because the kids grew up and moved away? And I, I just honestly, I think there's been a shift in in. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I think there's you a, bit of, a bit of a shift in sort of what kids do at night like that. Like, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of nephews that are up in their 20s and going down all the way to, you know, my kids are the youngest. And I mean, there's just, you know, I, I don't, like, I don't think, like, there's one picnic bench that has its seat, you know, like the bench falling off, but. There are several intact. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can sit on them. Mm -hmm. So. I'm sure people have hung out there before and made noise. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like a very concealed spot to be doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Just I mean, you're pretty much, yeah, 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 I don't know. Yeah. I mean, then it seems like you um, maybe learn that lesson once, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> well, um, I did talk to the sheriff's office in Moss Beach, mm -hmm. and um, they would be willing to at least increase initially patrols mm -hmm. in the area mm -hmm. to enforce Stay that there. regulation of no after mm -hmm. hours use. So uh, we do have some options, I think, to mm -hmm. mitigate mm -hmm. uh, disruptive behavior. Uh, traffic, uh, there are a number of cities that have address traffic problems through what's called traffic calming strategies. Mm -hmm. Mostly it revolves around speed bumps. Mm -hmm. uh, we have speed bumps all over the coast side. Uh, it's nothing unusual. From um, the comments we received, I think most of the neighbors on Balboa wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, is a, bumps, this is a potential so benefit to that area. Yeah. Yeah. Slow down yeah. the, slow down the, the yeah. cars. I, I mean, I encourage you to go, Come up Columbus yeah. from Avenue Alhambra and make that right turn onto southbound Balboa. That is a blind hill. I mean, it really is a is a bad curve. And if that's the site of our play area, you're coming up over that blind hill. So I am concerned about kids crossing the street there and, and going back and forth. I think it does need something. So I don't know whether it's the sheriff or you really would know whether it's um, Department of Public Works that we would work with on that. Both, but I think both maybe, of them. We would need uh, we would need something particularly on that southbound side. Public Works is the is the organization that would have speed bumps control over the road surface. And they probably make us pay for it, but 
but they'd advise. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee for Half Moon Bay, and one of the things that Half Moon Bay is doing is they're doing these bulb outs, you know, where they make the sidewalk go out farther into the road. Right. So that makes the distance between the two sidewalks shorter, which gives the pedestrian a little greater chance of making it to the other side. Yeah. Um, for bicycles, though, that forces them to the center of the road, which I'm not fond of, but they promise sharrows and a lowered, you know, m miles per hour. Um, plus speed bumps and things like that, but that's the, it's a full-on thing and they're also using the bulb outs as water detention um, uh, Water runoff control mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. Great, so uh, Speed bumps they were called bulb outs bulb outs, right? Okay. Uh, 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 with crosswalks and signage crosswalks uh, There's one at La Petite Bulleen. We certainly are very concerned about child safety. We're not yeah. going to do anything that would really dramatically increase um, safety concerns, but children are crossing right now without any of these. Mm -hmm. uh, bikes. And bikes. And, mm -hmm. uh, so. That would help with one of the one of the issues, just to jump to the next one with parking, is that mm -hmm. as people swing by there at 35 miles an hour, you know, and then they come across the parked cars on either side of the road. So that really, mm -hmm. I think there is currently a but there's limited parking because mm -hmm. it's on either side of the road. And then uh, the speed plus the parking makes it even less safe. Well, I think one of the <coughs> things that is the background on this is if this is a neighborhood park, mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about the, the need for a restroom is reduced because people will be walking there, mm -hmm. and they could walk back home. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not going to be that much traffic generated from the playground itself, the play area itself. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one thing I think that needs to really be laid out is how much traffic. If we look at Moss Beach Park, if we look at Quarry Park playground, it's, now Quarry Park is a lot more than the playground. Yeah. Uh, they get dog walkers that are going up, and the majority are dog walkers, as the survey I did for County Park yeah. showed. Uh, but if you just look at the Moss Beach playground, on a Saturday morning when families are out, uh, there's very few cars there. So we don't think there's going to be a tremendous amount of traffic generated from it or parking that is needed because of it. It's really why Burnham is a better venue for something bigger and more elaborate because mm -hmm. it's not a residential street right. and, uh, and we can put in a parking lot. Right. Yeah, I live on one side of Quarry Park, and as you noted, in terms of the parking lot, it's almost always empty, even with all that going on with the exceptional weekend parties. And, mm -hmm. and then when we were looking at the pump track stuff, I would mm -hmm. go every day and take a picture, right. yeah. we, if we <laughs> needed too. it, because it's not a zoo, you know, like yeah. some people have noted, it is very calm and quiet, even with everything going on there. Most people, if they're going to bike, they ride the bikes there. Right. They're going to walk their dogs and the things <laughs> they walk, they walk there, right? There's very few cars there most days. So we think there's going to be relatively little new traffic generated from this proposal. Mm -hmm. um, but we would, the district would need to work with the county to identify uh, signs, traffic calming, if there are no parking areas, if there are bulb outs or all these uh, particular uh, approaches to reduce those concerns. Uh, moving on, trees. Uh, let me just mention that, uh, as, as Steve uh, described earlier, for median number seven, that is near Francisco, um, no trees would be removed for the proposal. Now, trimming, yes. Trimming is needed to make tr the existing trees safer. Um, as the neighbors have pointed out, there are limbs that fall. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no maintenance mm -hmm. of those trees, uh, and dead limbs do fall. So I would think with this maintenance contract that uh, the district have is that there would be an annual, if not more frequent, tree maintenance For agreement. For overhanging branches. Uh, to, to address those overhanging branches. But again, outside of the area that we would have for a play area, mm -hmm. uh, that's county jurisdiction. Um, and I think we could work with the county to have them 
paid particular attention to that median seven or median eight as, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, two weeks ago, they ground down the stump in median eight for that big tree that they took out. So they do work. They're maybe not the fastest, but they have a lot going on. Uh, let's talk about children's safety. Uh, Paul, you have, you have young children. Uh, what would be some of your concerns uh, about a play area uh, at median seven or eight? You know, my only concern with kids' safety, my kids, is, is cars. Really, you know, I mean, as a kid, my friend, we were riding bikes with my friend and his younger brother, and his younger brother got hit by a car and killed. So, you know, that's the only thing I think of sometimes, and it's just, you know, has to do, but I still let my kids ride bikes and, you know, they go off on their own. But in terms of this play area, this, this area, are there particular just safety? Just cars, like, you know, traffic. Which I don't think I spend a lot of time up there, and I don't think if the, I don't think there's a lot of traffic up there. I mean, you know, during um, I walk up there frequently, and um, at rush hour, you know, uh, in the, both in the morning and the evenings, there's a lot of commuters that are just going really fast. There's not usually that many people out at the same time, and they're usually adults walking their dogs. So, you know, it's it's okay. But I mean, we, if you really want to create a destination location for kids to go. I think, you know, at every corner or intersection, there's got to be a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. You know, and the curb's got to be lower. There's got to be, like, a ramp that goes down. I mean, really, the county's got a lot of work to do in El Granada to make it ADA accept mm -hmm. accessible. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's your trigger right there. You want them to get them to do something? <coughs> that guy that's suing everybody, all the restaurants, <laughs> have him sue them just on the medians and stuff like that, access <laughs> to the park. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to generate any more heat. I think the... Um, I mean, I, it's, I don't really, like, understand, if you look at the big picture, when people have, are just all out and out against, like, like types of long, gradual speed bumps that, you know, keep you from going 35 in a residential neighborhood in certain spots. I know there's people just flat out are against them, and I don't know if I totally understand the argument against them, you know? Um, they're all up Coral Reef Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, they're definitely out there. Mm -hmm. If you have them, you know, build a certain way, you don't have to come to a complete stop to go for them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to really hear what people, what, what people, why people are against them. They don't want to go slow. <laughs> they don't like, they don't like the speed. But it's like, yeah, what do they want to go, 50? I mean. Mm -hmm. Judging by what I see, <laughs> pretty much. They, want, they want to go as fast as they can go, you know. And I think it had. I think it's probably um, people who aren't thinking about the whole community, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, as a whole. Selfish. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. You know, and especially if you haven't had kids yet, and you're just eager to get to work, you're so self-oriented, mm -hmm. and you know. But if you mention that, well, we do have a larger community. There's older people. There's ADA people. There's kids. You know. I mean, those work if you've ever driven in Baja. I was just going to say, speed when you put it in Baja, Baja style speed bumps. Your car's done. That's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, so I think we've addressed some of the I issues related to safety, <laughs> children's safety and traffic. Um, traffic was definitely the most, yeah. most commonly mentioned in the comments. There was a child apparently hit by a car on Balboa Circle some years ago. Right. Right. Survived, but uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you here again to come up. If you know we're talking about a split rail fence or some kind of fence to you know slow down any kids that would immediately dart out into the street, um, would you comment about what other communities are doing? in terms of child safety and play areas related to traffic and uh, not so much the design of the play structures, but other elements? I, I would say that um, almost all playgrounds we work on do have some, some type of barrier, uh, either split rail fencing or very low railing or walls, like, like for instance, if you sink a playground, there's a wall uh, that will restrict the kid from making any immediate 
dash towards the street. I mean, it provides for easier monitoring mm -hmm. by the parents. So I would say, uh, and, and a lot of times um, they'll restrict that fencing or that railing to only one entry. So that entry and a lot of times it's the seating mm -hmm. that uh, a parent might use is by that, by that opening. So they have an ability to Capture. Intercept. <laughs> intercept. Yeah, intercept. Yeah. Yeah. Grab them yeah. yeah. before they get away. Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, children at a certain age just they just can just beeline for anywhere. You know? <laughs> they can still do that now uh, with the existing area, yeah, yeah. Um, but we're talking about maybe a few. Uh, what about? Uh, my concern with the fencing is it's going to create security issues. I mean, if you, you consider picnic tables as being a security issue, then I think fencing will be a security issue for, you know, it reduces visibility. And I, I think if you place the park more centrally, you know, um, and there can be other different kinds of barriers, like, you know, if, you're, if it's not landscaped out there, then it's going to be rougher. They're more likely to fall down in the duff in the natural part before, you know, they get away. I mean, as long as there's... 10 or 15 feet, you know, a parent is going to be able to chase their toddler down. You mean set back from the road? Yeah, yeah, just have it set back as opposed to fences, which I believe will cause that other security issue. Yeah, if there is any fencing, it, it does have to be open, so it's not a security or visibility yeah, issue. You know, regarding safety, just to, you know, address, you know, what Chris is saying, I think that child safe, there's an element of danger to children growing up when there's not recreational activities for them to partake in and outdoor adventure to be had. Because mm -hmm. the alternative is just to be at home with their parents and it's too easy for the parents to just be, just pulling their hair out from the noise and just stick them in front of the screen mm -hmm. and just let them veg out. And you know, I, I think that's actually a big problem. Yes. So, you know, and that's why I got involved with this, with the G, with this park and yes. mm -hmm. so. Get kids moving. Provide alternatives. There's certainly a, a, a obesity of the yeah. and children. Yeah. That's an example. Um, so, let's talk about child safety from a design of the elements perspective. Uh, so, federal law, which we'd have to follow, obviously, mm -hmm. states that if, it's, uh, if an element is over six feet above the ground, then there has to be cushioning surface below. Um, and some of the cushioning surfaces that are legal, uh, according to Steve, are wood chips mm -hmm. and rubber rubber surfaces. Um, because we want to have more of a natural uh, feel to the area, and less uh, visual impact, I think we're probably leaning towards wood chips mm -hmm. as, a, as an alternative. It's, mm -hmm. They're permeable and uh, and they provide some of that cushioning. Uh, Eucaly eucalyptus. Right. Eu yeah, right, made right. on site. Yeah, eucalyptus. Again, yeah. use, use the yeah. uh, resources that are right there if we can. Somebody uh, asked me, in, and I think the answer is yes, if um, wood chips would be ADA compliant for access, and I think Steve said yes, they are. Yes, they are. There are approved wood chip, uh, a wood chip product Type. that is. Uh, not any, not any big mulch that you might see, like uh, the uh, the Allied Waste produces wood chips. Those wouldn't meet that requirement. There, are, there is a certain type of wood chip that compacts, mm -hmm. and it is accessible. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. We well, have a good designer who knows uh, knows these considerations. Uh, there, we the the place any place structures themselves would need to be. Uh, design of shield with safety in mind and inspected. So every year, at minimum, place structures must be inspected mm -hmm. uh, for danger and that kind of thing. Uh, can, can we try to avoid those uh, prefabbed place structures and, and try and do something creative like take one of those big logs that's down in the parking lot and put climbing holds on it. I mean, that'd be a great bouldering activity. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are not talking about, I think everybody is 
that this we're not talking about big modern flashy colorful metal play structures um, if we do have a play structure it would be moderate in size um, mm -hmm. such as yeah, say for instance the spider the cylindrical spider web at Quarry Park which is about six feet high um, which is not purple and green and mm -hmm. pink mm -hmm. polka dots um, <coughs> the uh, but I, for instance, we have I've been in contact with um, uh, what's the redwood company here? Um, Big, uh, Big Creek. Yeah. Big Creek Redwood is interested in possibly providing um, a redwood log that could be used and oh. as a as a play structure. It, it might be carved into the shape of a whale, like I've proposed, mm -hmm. or other things like that. But um, uh, and then the artists right there at Highway 92 mm -hmm. and Highway 1, approximately just up from mm -hmm. uh, Highway 1, is interesting. He's a, he's a log artist. Mm -hmm. and Where the he, big uh, firewood. Right, the firewood yeah. uh, used to be called firewood farms. Mm -hmm. uh, he is interested in using something like a redwood log to create a, a, a play structure that would be of interest to kids and also uh, using local materials. Uh, I will say that the research uh, shows that kids love the bright, flashy, audacious. So if we are doing this in a muted way, it, we're doing it to appease the residents in the area, not saying this is what kids really absolutely Well, I mean, the log will be, you know, sort of subdued but the climbing holes that you could put you know put on there could be primary colors right you know right yeah <coughs> so we're not talking about big flashy play elements um, we're really not talking about disturbing the general aesthetic mm -hmm. of the natural medium we're just talking about putting something on it that kids could exercise on right. that would want to we would definitely have seating for to encourage parents and nannies mm -hmm. to supervise their kids while they're there. Uh, we're talking about at least, uh, I think it's very important to, and it's a standard practice, that we have a toddler-oriented part of the play area. That's age two to five, in which very low elements, uh, lots of padding, um, for it meets the coordination and physical development capabilities of the age group and keeps the older kids away. Uh, what accidents that happen in the past is where the bigger kids are playing on the, the toddler area and that can create problems. Uh, so I think we would want to have, uh, from children's safety standpoint, as well as the, you know, providing something for all kids, at least, uh, below age 10 or 12, uh, we have a toddler area and a age 5 to 10, 12 area as well. These don't need to be large, they just need to be separated so that the parent who's there can see both of their kids. We don't want to have, I don't think there's a, uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to have only a toddler area, age 2 to 5, because what if your family has a kid who's 5 and a kid who's 9? Where is a nine-year-old going to play? He's going to play with a toddler, which is not what we want. So, or or just people who are to tears. So, Pat, Pat I think we're talking I, about. I was lobbying for maybe an in deference to the neighbors, maybe just a toddler area, um, and I and I respect that argument. Although I thought, well, they use it in the daytime when the bigger kids are at school. Um, but it, but Chris's comment um, you know, persuades me that we could stretch a little bit uh, with the neighbors. And I went out and walked. The uh, distance, I think, when we talked to Steve, if we did both, the drawing C was about 80 feet from end to end, um, which is which is about the length of the fence of the lady who lives directly across the street. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't take it takes up maybe a quarter of the median. And it just depends on if we could to the point. I think some of you may center it more so it's not so close to the fence and that means we, we make the path go around it so the right. path is still accessible right. but we could probably situate it so that um, so that it's set back a little bit and there's room for both so i was uh, i'm still on the fence so to speak. <laughs>
but amenable to uh, drawing growth. I, I, I homeschooled and I spent a large part of my time at Ocean View Park and um, homeschoolers tend to have a very diverse um, age group uh, and yeah. so I remember when my son was about one and a half or two, you know, I showed up at the park and there were all these older kids there. But if you separate them, they don't know how to be considerate of each other. They never learn that. And the parents are usually there at the park. They're usually on top of it. And uh, I, in all the years that I was there, probably six years of every Thursday, nobody ever got hurt. Um, and the little, the older kids, um, when they were running on that that bridge that would like wobble and every, I remember my son was standing on the bridge, you know, holding the chain, and this is maybe in the first month that I'd get to know these kids, and I was like, eh. But the kids like slowed right down, they patted him on the head, and then they sped up. I mean, that was part of the game, is to make sure that the little kids didn't get hurt, because they all had smaller siblings, so I think the separating them out, I, I don't know, I understand the legal liability concept, but I don't agree with it from a social perspective and educational perspective. There is, there is a liability Well, you look at Ocean View Park. There's not. There's no separation. Right. So that's precedent right there for not coddling the kids. One, but, yeah, yeah. So we have, we're mixed as whether toddler and also mm -hmm. older kid. But how are we going to address the families that have a ten-year-old with a toddler? There's only you know mm -hmm. an area a log is two feet off the ground. Uh, it's you have not different size. You, you have different size logs. I mean, I was watching the lady who bought my house. She's got a a three-year-old and she was climbing on this stool and the dad was just holding the stool and you know the mother was letting her do that so it was maybe only a two to three feet climb but she had the rungs and she got up there and then she ended up sitting and that was fun for her right. you know I, I honestly you have a log that's carved with different steps and seats mm -hmm. and things like that that I think you put a couple of those up in the median and you know maybe one's a little bit more advanced than the other but I, don't know, I just don't like the coddling thing Anybody else on child safety? Okay, runoff from non-permeable surfaces. Uh, we've eliminated all the non-force surface elements, such as basketball mm -hmm. points, so it should not be doing that. Um, attracting homeless is another. This is a <coughs> this is a problem all over. Mm -hmm. um, I work with San Francisco all the time, and obviously this is not San Francisco we're talking about. Uh, but there are clearly ways to, to minimize this from development. So we're eliminating restaurant, which is proposing that. Uh, well, we, we voted on that last time to, mm -hmm. to remove the restroom. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> tables and long benches without, without mm -hmm. um, up there, uh, a ridge in the mm -hmm. center. Uh, and closing the park at night. Mm -hmm. So I think we are trying to address some of those issues. The restrooms so seem to be causing the most agita. Mm -hmm. um, and, sh and sheriff patrols. Yeah. If I could. <coughs> uh, the homeless, uh, citing that as a concern, uh, is also something that bothers me. Two out of the last three times I, per I participated in the San Mateo County Homeless Census Survey, uh, as the El Granada census taker. Less than 10 homeless people um, both times that I did it. Um, if they were going to be sleeping in those areas, they would be doing it now. Um, this is, as you noted, Patrick, this is not San Francisco. Um, the, I do see occasionally a person with a bedroll hiking up uh, towards Quarry Park or, or the hills behind El Granada, so I'm not saying they're not there. But to me, the homeless specter is a bit of a bogeyman. This is the same thing that we are hearing about why we cannot have a below grade passing at Gray Whale Cove, because the homeless will, will encamp there. I, I don't think this is an issue, and it, 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 it troubles me that this is being considered as a serious problem. Um, they're not there now. Uh, it, and and I don't think they will be there in the future. And if that is really a concern, that and many of the other concerns you could be discussed, uh, you have discussed, could be addressed by considering some kind of security personnel. 
You know, I mean, liability issues, you're heading this direction anyways, where at, in, at least I hope in the coming years, GCSD will actually have some paid personnel. And some of those personnel should be security. It wouldn't take much to have a pickup truck and just drive by every you know, hour or so, or have a person on regular rounds. And homeless problem, which is non-existent, will be even less of an issue. So again, the homeless, citing the homeless concerns me on a philosophical level, I guess, and also a social level. I agree. I'm on the, my, the ground on my feet or my bike, and I, there's not a homeless pr problem here. Um, in El Granada, there's more of one in Half Moon Bay. Um, so I agree with you, Chris. And so I think that if we don't want a bathroom there, that shouldn't be the reason for not having the bathroom there. I think it's fa fatuous. And, and in truth, Chris, the, if you look at the last video, it was literally one single anecdote from one neighbor who had a homeless person that was in a camper van who crapped on her sidewalk. So that was a single anecdote. Um, and I, but personally, I, I'm walking there early in the morning, in the evening, never ever even seen one single person, even with a, a you know, knapsack or something. Yeah, uh, thank you, Michelle, I, I totally agree. Um, I'm sorry to come back up, but one last thing you brought up, the, the bathroom. I mean, do we have a homeless problem at Moss Beach Park? There's a bathroom there. I again think I, I'm... Same with Koi Park. There's plenty of places to lay down and sleep there, too, and there's right. no homeless people. I mean. So I also feel like to say that there's not going to be bathrooms, I mean, again, it feels like a, uh, an intentional constraining of the resources or the possibilities by presenting various reasons. And so take the bathroom out, take the basketball court out, noise will be reduced. I'm telling you, toddlers make a lot more noise than teenagers. They're screaming and crying. Um, these, these concerns sound more like excuses and reasons to downscale the project. And again, I've got, I, I have a dog in this race, I have an 11 year old, and I am really concerned, really concerned. I mean, as with any infrastructure that you install, you'll have to have maintenance. So, you know, just like the county parks do, they do their sunrise, sunset rounds, and they close the you know, the bathroom at night. Mm -hmm. So it's all it's all fixable, um, amelioratable. In this case, I did go back and look at the list of amenities we're allowed to consider in the median use permit, and bathrooms isn't on it. So it's not even possible. Yeah. And and actually, we, it has half court basketball, but not full court. So. We didn't, we didn't check it and before we drew. And we as a committee of beyond that, we said no basketball court, no uh, bathroom. The county said that? That was our motion that passed unanimously right. last mm -hmm. time. Uh, we can change that to another motion. Uh, the reason why you bring up homelessness is that it was brought up by others. So um, Just one person uh, mentioned it. We're not necessarily saying that it's a deal breaker. Looking at potential impacts and potential mitigation. Uh, this uh, we talked about limiting walker dog walker use of the medians early and late. So this is only related to potentially having uh, a policy approved regulation that the park is closed. Uh, you know, six a.m. or from six, from half an hour after sunrise sunset. Excuse me to 6 a.m. or sun, sunrise. Um, again, we would exempt, any signage would exempt dog walkers or, and or walkers. Be, or be specific to a or, or be specific area. to a, an area. Okay. Um, and none of the structures or fences that are contemplated would block any trail. In fact, it might actually improve trail okay. access. Uh, let's talk about visual aesthetics. This is one that's so difficult to address because one person's idea of God is another person's God. It looks really great. Uh, but what we've said is no bright colors for the play area elements. Uh, lower heights, we're not talking about 20 foot high structures here. Uh, we're potentially having some of the elements set slightly below grade. Uh, we, in our motion last week, we talked about having a nature play theme to the play elements. So not so much gaudy modern metal um, type of thing. Uh, we're considering some vegetation screening, again, balancing that 
with having maintaining visibility mm -hmm. so that there's not a child safety issue there. Um, only a split rail fence, that is what is around Quarry Park, that's about many of the parks, it's a standard um, way of helping to keep kids from running uh, directly into the street or something like that. Um, no asphalt or concrete is being proposed in any way in this, in this proposal that we're talking about. Uh, so, no asphalt. Uh, if concrete is used, it would be just mainly underground to you to anchor the structures and such. Uh, other visual, potential visual mitigation measures is that we would have regular trash pick up and maintenance. So there would be potentially a trash can there mm -hmm. and regular trash removal. And when they come to maintain and inspect the site, they would pick up trash, they would remove graffiti, um, and they would look for safety issues. So that's what's being done by Go Native right now in Montera as a contractor to host and a number of the park agencies around here. So um, we could have them do a similar thing. I recommend doing that uh, to the board. Uh, and positively, uh, one thing we could consider doing is planting native flowering pollinator plants. These are native flowers, not so much on median 7 to block the view, but maybe on median 8 uh, at the entrance, uh, the far eastern side of median 8. So uh, a modest um, planting of some native flowers. Now, and again, if you look at the Alameda and the western mm -hmm. end, and number of medians, the locals have planted already mm -hmm. those kinds of things in the medians. Uh, so, you know, there is at least some of the community that, that values having mm -hmm. a, a small amount, a low scale uh, planting mm -hmm. of, of plants. So that might add to the visual mm -hmm. positively and aesthetic of the year. So we're trying to, uh, <coughs> if we use on the trails, uh, again, no asphalt, so what we would recommend and was used everywhere around here. Uh, for instance, at the Fitzgerald Marine Preserve, that coastal trail has crushed granite, which is a tan color, blends right into the area, provides <coughs> increased access because now during the rainy season you can have access to that area where that trail might be too sloppy to, to work in, uh, to walk on in other areas. So, um, Pat, can I um, yeah. take your expertise or maybe Steve's? I, I had follow-up conversations with a couple of the people who came to the last meeting who mostly expressed concerns. And uh, one of their comments was that decomposed granite is um, hard on dog paws. They were concerned if we could decompose granite on the trails that it would interfere with the dog walkers. I walk my dogs on that trail bluff and also all over Quarry Park, which is just all decomposed granite. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. if there is an issue, or Steve, if you've heard of that issue of dogs and, I, I can see chunky, you know, big, big, big rock gravel. granite, but yeah. Yeah. Just, to, just to list every objection that yeah. I've heard, I've heard that one. I've, I've never heard that mm -hmm. concern before. Okay, I have big dogs, so. Maybe on, maybe on what they call drain rock or base rock, where there's large three quarter inch Chunks that get angular toes. gravel. Yeah. But not on decomposed granite. Okay. Tell us again, what is decomposed granite, just real quick? Decomposed granite is, is uh, they basically take granite and crush it into small fines, and then it's compacted. Usually it comes in two different colors. It's a gray color or a gold, golden yellow color. Mm -hmm. It's compacted and it becomes a, a pervious, semi-pervious, uh, very, very uh, walkable, very uh, usable path surface. A lot of parks, more natural parks. You know. Well, nobody can go up to the um, park atop of the Trans Bay Center right now, no. but I did get to walk around it before it closed, and the, all, the whole, all of their walking surface is the gray decomposed granite. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right. Um, you know, I mean, just like, I mean, I know 
like the you know the suggestion here is to not use any concrete, but it does. I mean, I see a lot of value in some sort of concrete circular path for um, for scooters and um, running bikes and stuff like that. You know, I'm mean, actually put one in my backyard. You know, the kids spend hours. I had one of those when I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, that's you're not maybe the DG would get that too, but you're not as well. That came up at Burnham to make sure that we have a perimeter path and make sure that we've got paths that are yeah. good for bicycles and scooters. Yeah. And and really the, work with them. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. concrete was probably needed. Mm -hmm. Like as far as Burnham. Again, that's a tough maintenance issue sometimes concrete problems. But the pump truck would be an alternative to that. You know, where they would definitely have an opportunity. To oh yeah, that would be great. <laughs> We're not talking about a pump track here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. Uh, That's, uh, Sam Hertzberg told me that uh, to check back after mid-November is that with their stall plan, but they haven't updated anything yeah, on there. Record. So he said mid-November. So when this he said, mid he said check back. Yeah. This three okay. weeks ago. Yeah. But I um, haven't heard anything. Just okay. for just for people who don't know, the district did send a letter to um, SMC Parks in August offering to fund mm -hmm. um, and, and support uh, mm -hmm. gathering volunteers for a pump track. And last I heard, Sam and the general manager, the Sam Hertzberg from SMC Parks and the general manager were trying to set up a meeting to talk about how that would work. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> let's uh, before, before let's get Chris to the last team. issue that we have listed. Uh, the last issue that's been brought up: uh, homeowner liability for advanced injuries on the right of way. Uh, right now, uh, as I understand it, Nancy, you dug into that we a little bit more. Homework. Why don't you tell us what you found? Because I well, I had and, and heard. Delia, I had heard before we got the use permit that it was determined that the uh, county does own the medians, which is why we got the permit. Um, but the, uh, the Department of Public Work website gives a different impression. I went back and looked at the median, it's one of the reasons I went back and looked at the median use permit, and it actually does say the county has an easement, which includes the medians, and they have the right, since they have the easement, to give us an encroachment permit. Mm -hmm. So I looked up, and I will share with you, the county right-of-way <laughs> rules. But they do have, so the street and medians are an easement that the county has and the county's maintaining. The homeowners actually do own the underlying land to the center of the median, and I guess I own the underlying land to the center of Columbus Street. Um, and the, the county has an easement and gets to use it. So the homeowner can't do anything with it, but they own the land. So the, the concern that was expressed by two people who came to our meeting November 1st and to the November board meeting was, will they be liable? Because they know they're liable for the sidewalks and in fact have to maintain the sidewalks. So is that true? They, they, do, um, they do apparently have liability all the way to the edge of the sidewalk, and if there is, you know, someone gets hurt on the sidewalk, the homeowner is liable. And so this one homeowner told me that she was able to get liability insurance that covers, you know, to the curb, but she was not able to get any insurance that covered beyond the curb, which is kind of where this discussion came up. Mm -hmm. So would she be liable if a kid gets hit running across the street to uh, the playground? My guess is, and it would be good just to have the, the county legal people have, or our district legal people give a nod, is that the county is responsible for the improvements in the easement that it is managing just as GCSD, according to our permit, would be responsible for anything in our improvement that is within their easement. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be good if we could get uh, district legal to say yes. That. So they, they, that was one of the concerns that they brought up, but are they liable for whatever would happen in our play area on the median since they own the underlying land? So <laughs> I, I guess the question is, would their liability uh, increase uh, with the play structure or play area on the medians? On the medians, my understanding is that the district is 
if we're improving the play area, as an example, um, within the boundaries our of our play area, we are liable. We are liable. So um, it would not necessarily increase any homeowner's liability uh, from the current state on, on, on the uh, mediums. Um, they still have, and they like even right now, they have liability on the sidewalks. So um, that is something that the PAC uh, started this process uh, in a clarification that. Um, the homeowners are not. The initial discussions were that the homeowners were responsible for the medians, and we've cleared that up now, and that is not the case. Um, thank you, District Legal Counsel, for clarifying that. So, PAC folks, uh, those were some of the impacts that were addressed and some of the potential mitigation measures. We've had a good discussion. Anything else that you want to bring up in terms of potential mitigation measures uh, that should be considered? Okay. All right. Um, I would maybe, Pat, I'll think, of, I'll think about this, but as I think about the first quarter newsletter, think about without going into this much detail, just to, to play back to people that we heard them, we discussed them, we mitigated you know, where, we, where we could reasonably could, mm -hmm. some kind of summary of this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very comprehensive list of every, every nay, a nay, say, or say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, treat it like a, a one-page or fact, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, then I'll post it out on my website, too. I'd like to, um, I'd like to have on the district website kind of more of a um, reference documents place mm -hmm. where we could, you know, put mm -hmm. documents so you don't have to go peeling through meeting packs to find key documents mm -hmm. like the meeting use permit, the Burnham report, this report. Um, mm -hmm. But it, in a newsletter, we could put a link to it. It's probably be better to put the newsletter on your site than mm -hmm. after the after after the district legal reviews and approves the content. Yeah, again, this is just, we haven't even recommended it formally. So, uh, mm -hmm. we haven't recommended a play area, um, and certainly the board has not approved it. So, mm -hmm. uh, what, we're, what we're doing is what we're supposed to be doing, which is advising uh, the board and discussing issues and bringing forth community concerns and support uh, for Rec parks and recreation uh, structures, facilities in the district. So uh, nothing is firm yet. There are many opportunities for feedback. I think that's one of the key things that we need to mention to uh, anyone who's interested in this is that this is not a done deal. Uh, we do not have a firm proposal. We will be making, the PAC will be making a recommendation to the district board or the decision makers here uh, in 2019. So, uh, not quite sure when that's going to be. Uh, and we're going to talk about later on in the meeting uh, some potential schedule for upcoming events. Um, but right now, uh, I think we had a good discussion. I don't know that we need a motion. Uh, it's just been a, a good discussion. All right. Can I add one thing, just a little tidbit of information sure. relevant to play areas and uh, Chris's comments earlier made me pull this out. I looked at, um, because I was running for an office and so could get access to the voter rolls, um, which, surprising to me, had people's birth dates on them. So I could uh, uh, look at all the registered voters and I looked over the demographics and then pulled the school data on the number of students um, at the high school, the middle school, uh, El Granada, Wilkinson, estimated what share of the um, school kids were from El Granada just based on our total share of the SAM budget. And um, while more than 40% of our residents, and I, the total added up to about 5,700, which is a pretty good share of the somewhere between six and six and seven thousand people we have in the district. 
because um, it doesn't have unregistered voters and so on. But more than 40% of the people are over 55, mm -hmm. which, is, which is not surprising. We have a bit of an aging population. But at the same time, roughly 25% of the population is under 18. Mm -hmm. So we, we do not have an insignificant number of kids. In fact, we've got uh, probably about 1,200 kids um, mm -hmm. between 0 and 18 um, that, that right now mm -hmm. basically have the, the beach, the skateboard ramp, and Quarry Park uh, as their And they're stuck their here on the weekends. Areas. Areas. I remember some of the and you can't go anywhere on the yeah. weekends. <laughs> and El Granada School. And, and El Granada mm -hmm. School playground. Um, so I just wanted, to, I, it was good to get that number out there that, you know, 25% of our population is kids who do need more recreational opportunities. Um, and, I, and that seems to be some of the, the turnover that we're getting. And then you'd assume that maybe 20% or so would be parents of those kids. About, uh, be about 20% are between 18 and 40. About 20% are between 40 and 55. So that means so, there's... So probably more like 40% are parents of kids. Almost 50% would have an interest in young people and park-related activities mm -hmm. then. Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than looking at it at the 40% yeah. or the older population. Mm -hmm. no. I, think it's the, I think that's the most complicated, difficult thing um, for us as we go forward to um, analyze and listen because the people who are 40 and under hard time coming to these meetings. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, I, mean, I, I watch the city council meetings and demographically it's like, oh, it's like it's people who have the time to take off, you know, in the evening mm -hmm. and they're not doing homework and cooking dinner. So. And we did catch more of them on a Saturday morning. Right. Well, I, I, I do want to sit outside the, the post office. So once we have the right materials, um, you know, I'm happy to do that. And maybe it's right. somebody else who's sitting there. Yeah. Steve, I wanted to ask you when, uh, Again, is there any other issues that you see coming up in our small play, uh, playground proposals that uh, we really haven't touched on here that are, you know, almost every playground proposal has something like this. Are we missing anything? Um, no, I think, I think we touched on everything. Did you, would you please? Yeah. I, I, I do think we have touched on, you have touched on everything okay. that I can think of experience. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Glad to hear it. Thank you. All right. So we're going to move on then to uh, our next discussion item, which is uh, potential future outreach events. So every PAC meeting is an opportunity for that. Uh, but this is, we're talking about some other type of uh, public outreach event. On the 20th of October, we had a meeting at Medians at the potential, one of the potential uh, play area sites. Um, and uh, we could do that again in the future, uh, but with maybe some more refined designs uh, mm -hmm. that would show the actual ideas for what a play structure would look like, what it would look yeah. like from uh, a side view, uh, not just a top view. Um, so there are, you know, we could have tables in the post office, we could have tables elsewhere in the community. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways of getting public feedback and, and I think we should, uh, we should try to get all those, as many of those as we can uh, as, a, as a pack and and I'm sure the board will be supportive of that as well. Uh, soccer, soccer and baseball would be a good place to put out tables. I know right. when I was um, developing the Half Moon Bay Yacht Club Sailing Program, we went to those places, soccer, baseball. Mm -hmm. So our next meeting, PAC meeting, is scheduled tentatively for this January 17th. And at that meeting, uh, I would like to present, I think we need to present a report uh, on the, the status of the Balboa play area findings and maybe even come up with some rough cost estimates. We can work with Steve's uh, company, uh, have him identify, have them identify some cost estimates. Um, so are you all supportive of, um, yeah. of this kind of a, a schedule? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm having January 17th. I can't make it then. 
And is any discussion on this January 17th? January 17th is just a, is a presentation to the board. To the board, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I will and be out of town, but you'll be there. I will yeah. be there. I have something else that night. Okay. So it's a, it's a regular board meeting. It's a regular board meeting. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we don't, I don't need to be there. You don't need to be okay. there. No, it's not a PAC meeting. It's a, we, the PAC would be, as rep representatives of the PAC, gotcha. so we would present what the PAC is. Approve, discuss, and Mike, I want to recommend, not fully recommend yet. I don't think we're there yet. So we won't have a meeting on the 3rd then? Any? We won't have a, 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 a PAC meeting. Um, the first. I'm gone most of January, so okay. I will be there for the 17th. I think we had tentatively had one on the 8th, so we're saying we don't need that one. Right. Uh, do we need that one? Now, the 8th would be an opportunity to, uh, for us to really uh, look at a draft of what we would be giving to the board and to go over that, make sure that the PAC members uh, have a unified vision of what that would, what we come up with so far. Uh, I'm happy to draft that. I'm happy to be there on the eighth. Uh, I'll make sure before I say that. Uh, but that has been proposed. Are we allowed, Delia, to for Pat to draft something and circulate it for comment back to him? If he's going to from the, uh, I would draft something, send it to the committee members. They would send something back to me outside of a meeting date. Before for him to, it's his presentation to the board oh, for January. Oh, to review the, the report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> that's not, I don't believe that's any violation. Of yeah, if you send it out. Because, then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, send it to me, and then I can send it out. And okay. people can send comments back, and then. January 8th, it's, it, uh, and you're unavailable. But I think if, if you can circulate it and people can send comments back, then I don't think we need to meet that day. Okay. Uh, it might, yeah, I guess the, the beauty of meeting the public is that it is out there for the public to comment on uh, as well. Uh, there's value, I think, you know, this is another public outreach opportunity. Here we are, just the sixth, it's only, it's just only a month away. Uh, so I think there's value in outreach, and I think there's value in uh, having us all together at the same room at the same time, getting it, getting it done versus emailing back and forth. One person likes this, another person doesn't. You know, how are we going to come together? Uh, so my recommendation would be that we would meet on a hopefully a short meeting. But we'd be open to public comment on our recommendation. And we would all, as a committee, uh, try to address it and firm it up. Yeah. So Suzanne, you can't do that. Yeah. I didn't you, did I we, not I think we have to check for a form. Are you there? I could do it. I'd appreciate it if it's short, because I'm leaving the next morning. <laughs> yes. Paul, are you okay. able to yeah. um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably able. I just, it's, you know, it's going to be a busy time. I just feel like we've done what we've done this evening. I think we would be repetitive. I mean, I'm not going to change my mind or the comments that I've had. The comments are on record. I think they just need to be collated and presented. I don't think we have to meet again about what we just meeted met about. Yes, yeah, it would be just to review the presentation to the board. Okay. And I mean, I think if there are going to be comments from us, there might be one or two, which I, I don't think that's, that's easy to manage by email. And actually, the public can comment at the board meeting. At the board meeting itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a good question, because if there's more public comment for people that haven't participated yet, that would be where they would go to the board meeting. Is that? Mm -hmm. right. that would mm -hmm. be yeah. the board And two, board. Right. two people well, did come to the But they wouldn't have the opportunity to shape meeting. our suggestions. Uh, more Any more than they already have. Yeah. Right. I will no add. The comments that Delia handed out tonight, there were about four more comments, plus um, Chris, I, I can either summarize my notes from your comment or you can feel free to send me your comments and we will, I'll add them as an addendum to the original report. Mm -hmm. okay. So right now I'm hearing that we don't want to have 
meeting on January 8th. Instead, I will write it in the, uh, Nancy and I will write a draft of what we would present to the board. Vice Chair and Chair, we drive as a subcommittee, we write the, the uh, draft. Circulate it to all of you. You would need to take the time to review that and get us feedback uh, right away. Probably take a couple iterations, but then we have the final wording of what we want and we can present that. Is that acceptable to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fine. That sounds good. Yes. Okay. All right, that's what we'll do. Uh, so, uh, no meeting. I'm going to write it down January 8th. Instead, or not because I stepped out for a minute, but did you discuss the rescheduling of the January 26th outreach or were you going to? Uh, we haven't got there yet. That's okay. Okay. All yeah, right. We wanted to just deal with this uh, January 17th back, uh, board meeting. Okay. And then, okay. But then, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, we're okay. Well, I think we have a plan for January 8th and how to uh, the presentation to the board. Uh, January 17th, I will be there. Uh, we had originally, as Delia mentioned, we had originally been talked last meeting, you know, we had a draft schedule of activities that we presented, and we were looking at a January 26 mm -hmm. public meeting, which uh, I'm recommending, and uh, several uh, board members have recommended that we delay that. That, that board meeting on the 26th is their first meeting of the new board members. They're going to have a lot of things going on, uh, mm -hmm. and that we would want to have their, their feedback on January 17th before we do anything. Uh, maybe they just say, hey, we, we don't want to play around. We don't want to play around. Uh, but uh, so 17th to 26th would not give us nearly enough time to plan for that. So we have to move it back. Two to three weeks of notification ahead. Yeah, and legal notices. So I am, I am recommending that February 23rd, so check your calendars, please would be a public outreach event number two. Um, and this Balboa. would- Balboa. That's Balboa. Right. Balboa, yeah. okay. yes. Only Balboa. And that would be where we would maybe have, uh, at the 17th board meeting, the, it would include a discussion and a board approval, disapproval of additional funding to support uh, drawings, concept drawings, advanced concept drawings for what we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. So that K and K through their contract with the district could um, do those additional drawings, uh, and those would be presented at this uh, in theory February 23rd public outreach event number two. Um, now I guess that's the week. So right, President's Day is the Monday before that. I don't know. Right. So is that when is school out? All the President's Day is the eight, Monday the 18th. Oh, you know what? I'm not in the wrong year. <laughs> it is. Well, it I is mon <laughs> I feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> Mon Monday the 18th is uh, yeah, President's Day. Yeah, same thing. That's President's Day. So I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, does okay. that make it ski week? Yeah, that, I mean that is a week off. That week is off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. School. Yeah, schools. I'm not here. I'm out of the country. March 2nd, which is the next Saturday, and the board meeting. Is February 14th. We could potentially have it the 16th. Mm -hmm. And again, many families leave early for President's mm -hmm. Week. And so Saturday the 16th and the 23rd both have constraints that way. Um, we need to decide, you know, I would like to get this, again, not delay this any more than we have to, uh, but we want to get good feedback. So what do you think? Um, I'm looking at March 18th, just to look farther ahead as a PAC meeting to where we could look at, <coughs> excuse me, we could look at the information we received from the public outreach event number two, process that, maybe make uh, any adjustments, tweaks, and so forth. <coughs> March 18th? Well, you know, maybe people, yeah. if they're informed, they could fill out these questionnaires, because mm -hmm. that seems to be a pretty, we, you know, we, that March, actually. March 18th is a Monday. Yeah, yeah, it's a PAC meeting. Oh. Yeah, this would be a PAC meeting. Oh, I see. 
We or could the impact send. They're small, but we could send basically the shrunk version of, of the drawings and the comment form to our newsletter list, which now has about 65 people on it. So, and you know, send them directly notice of the event, but include in that a comment form and the drawings if they just want to email comments back. Yeah, and if they put their address, right? I mean, yeah, that's it's, a, it you helps. can validate it, right, to some degree. Yeah. So you don't. And, and this would also. Well, you know, they, they had to give their address to get on our mailing list in the first place. <laughs> yeah. be another opportunity where we would try all the other outreach uh, mm -hmm. methods uh, to get feedback. You know, the table, the post office, the table at Spangler's on yeah. Saturday morning. I mean, I wasn't the, opposing the, the information to the school district. Um, you know, any way we can. Yeah, I mean, I think if the 20, I mean, I'm not saying the 23rd shouldn't happen, which I was just raising the point. We have to, I think we have to augment it with yeah. giving people alternative ways to get input in it. Yeah. I mean, I think I like once, once, once you give me the, the materials, I'm happy to sit out anywhere you want me to on a Saturday morning. We could do that and schedule. Pat is out the following Saturday. We could we could do the following Saturday. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, you know, it'd be over a two week period of time. Yeah, I'd do a post office. Yeah. You know, like I think the evening might be good too. Mm -hmm. Everyone's coming sure. off. You can mix it up. And running by the post office. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Various time mm -hmm. So, okay. So, uh, I'm hearing that um, we are going to stay with February 23rd as a public outreach event, but number two, but that we are going mm -hmm. to. Make sure that we use a number of different methods to get information. Um, for that event, we would have, uh, hopefully, approved by the board uh, and some new drawings that are more specific to the concepts that we're talking about so that people would have a more clear idea of what we're looking at. Um, so we're, uh, confir we're confirming the 23rd for a date, but not, we don't necessarily know location. Mm -hmm. Not yet. So. Okay. We what can certainly that? talk about that. Uh, you know, that this bring that up. Good point. Uh, if we have it on median seven where we had it before, that has the advantage of being in that exact location. We could have flags that point out the perimeter of what oh, we're that's talking good about, idea. and all those kinds. Of, there's a lot of advantages to have it there. Obviously, it could rain even more in raining cats and dogs. So, uh, and that would, would discourage people. But if they have a strong opinion, they'd probably come out anyway. This is a community has raincoats and umbrellas. So, um, uh, and if we had tents that would, yeah. you know, shield the drawings. And mm -hmm. I, I still, I like having it there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, board member Dye would want to make sure that we have a lot of different ways of collecting mm -hmm. information, just yeah. not that <coughs> meeting. I think the follow-up, the follow-up, doing a table mm -hmm. at the post office, you know, and having the drawings and giving people another opportunity as well as emailing them the drawings, the people who are 65 or so who ponied up to be on our email list and let them send comments back that way. I think we've augmented it. We would ways. certainly, you know, at least uh, 10 days before, we would hand deliver notices uh, mm -hmm. to all the neighbors that we defined as <coughs> neighborhood. Post it in all the places uh, we posted you it. You know, announcing the meeting, and so all those kinds of uh, activities that we would be in common. I think then I'd aim for a newsletter right around the 1st of February. So it would be after the board meeting for whatever input comes there. Mm -hmm. And then it could be in the newsletter on the 1st of February. Uh, we have, you know, I put down here tentatively February 4th. Uh, I don't know if we want to. Oh, for a pack meeting? For a pack meeting. That's a good let me, let me uh, run it by again. Mm -hmm. February 4th, tentative, very tentative for a PAC mm -hmm. meeting to plan the outreach of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And the other activities that we're going to be doing. Uh, February 23rd would be the public outreach of that. And so far, I'm hearing general agreement that we might want to do it on median 7 again. Mm -hmm. Michelle? Yep. I will. Yeah. Okay, so that will be on median. Uh, February 23rd. Then March 
18. Uh, about a month later, a PAC meeting to uh, address any of, the uh, any of the comments that we received uh, March 23rd. This would allow us to, uh, for instance, have some minor tweaks of the design or uh, something like that. It would still give, you know, there's board meetings every month, so there'd be opportunity for people to present at the board meetings as well. Uh, so February 23rd, event number two, March 18th. Post event uh, pack. Chain, yeah. a pack meeting. Uh, Pat, on um, the March 18th, and I know you're constrained because you because you travel a lot. I think that is fine because that gives a couple weeks to mm -hmm. put together all of the commentary that we get. Um, it is only three days before the GC, the board meeting, but they, we could just use the regular parks update slot at the board meeting to right. give them a, a readout of what we it heard. It wouldn't have to be an agenda item necessarily. It wouldn't have to be a separate notice yeah. to agenda item. Uh, it isn't here, but I think we can work with that. Yeah, we have a parks update. Uh, because I would think there's not going to be huge changes at that point. There would be refinements, uh, and the board could still you know, reject them all, but um, you know, from a PAC perspective, probably the refinements would be the major changes. Uh, so, uh, board members, are we, uh, committee members, are we willing to go with February 23rd, March 18th? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, if we want to stretch it even further, um, April. Uh, I am here April 4th. I'm not here April 25th, which was the original date that we had toyed with. Uh, what we could potentially do on April 4th is review the final draft of the play area, drawings, concepts, uh, and plan for a third and final public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, the third meeting, say for instance on May 1st, uh, would review the final play area designs. Uh, Pat, I'm, I got a little lost. So okay. Can so after, <laughs> continue, yeah. continue Not just surprised. send us an email, because this is, yeah. it's, it's getting really confusing. Okay, so we've got February 23rd, March 18th already. So April 4th. You spell out so many dates. I can't keep track. My calendar's confused. I'm confused. So okay, just I can I can send them out. Yeah, and yeah. Send yeah. Them out. Yeah. So the important thing is we have the next two months. We have February and March. Yeah, yeah. we got the first quarter covered. Okay. All right. Good. Um, something that Delia has on this calendar that we're not going to do. She's Delia. You've got a pack meeting on February 25th, which is a date we're taking off. So taking that off. Okay. So we can, so can we just update this calendar so it includes the meetings and then the outreach. Yeah. Maybe outreach is in orange or something like that. Yeah, yeah she had them in yellow. I'll certainly do that. All right. Uh, real quickly, um, if I could just distribute a couple of things that I think are pertinent to the side of before you go on to the next one, if I can sort it out here. I just um, wanted everyone to see, and Michelle, I have an entire copy of the um, county agreement for you. And then also, this, I plan on including this in the packet and into this one, but these are the new open script. Yeah. These are the items that we're allowed to do for our county agreement. So I just highlighted Great. This is helpful. Sorry. I've got one for him. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. And then I also have our park regulations, which our district board passed um, was it last year, I think. So I just thought it would be helpful. Agenda item number five, which is uh, 2019 Connection to Recreation Summer Events Program that is sponsored by Granada Community Services District. Uh, again, this is, I sent out to you and included in your packet is a potential list of summer programs. Um, I will preface it by saying that there was discussion last time to extending some original proposal was summer only programs like we did last year. 
uh, we were talking about, uh, there was some discussion last time about having a few items in spring, a few items in fall. Um, the list that you see here um, really tries very hard to, to provide something to parts of the community that are underserved now. So uh, there's no programs for people with disabilities. There's no programs for people who's, who speak Spanish. Um, and uh, there's no programs for young kids. There's, most, uh, there's limited programs for families. Uh, we do have Wilkinson School. I've been in touch with Wilkinson School, and they do have a pretty comprehensive camp program for kids, but that's just for mm -hmm. elementary school kids, mm -hmm. uh, primarily in junior high. So all the rest of the community doesn't have anyone currently addressing their needs. So this is trying to provide something for families, for seniors, for people with disabilities, uh, adult programs, uh, but on the other hand, we're very limited. We, we have no indoor space other than this room. This is it. Uh, we can rent from the school district, but it costs us money. Uh, so, uh, the other thing I'll preface it by saying is that uh, we're taking baby steps. Last summer we had only three programs. This summer, no, three. Free. Free I thought programs. you said three. <laughs> um, we had a number of programs. Um, and uh, this year, uh, I would like to propose that we have some programs that cost something. Um, I've met with Delia. Um, I have an online registration program that I've worked with for 10 years. It's free to the district. Um, I have offered to Delia to program uh, a whole site for the district. Um, it more or less runs itself. It's online registration requires credit card payment. Uh, so with a few programs that are uh, have a fee associated with them, now we can have week-long camps and things like that that uh, we didn't have last year. Uh, I just want to mention real quickly movies in the park, Cory Park. Uh, it has to be coordinated with the county. I, think so. I have um, been in touch with um, parks. Good. Good. Um, and I wasn't pursuing a movie in the park because SMC Parks actually does that in Quarry Park. Oh, right. They do okay. it once or twice. But I did have a conversation with uh, Matthew, the lead ranger, um, via email back and forth on an acoustic concert in the quarry, which I think that's the sound cool. would just be cool. Um, he sent me all of the forms. Right. He asked me to check with the close neighbors who are usually concerned about parking overflow and parking mm -hmm. on the street. So. He knows Fran. I said I will check with Fran and yeah. make sure that's okay. Um, but I think and that one has yeah. some. Yeah, yeah. Right here. yeah. you're up the hill. Yeah, yeah. Up the hill. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, you definitely yeah. Here. The, um, so that one may have legs. And uh, once I get through the 12 documents he sent me to get through, um, I may uh, then reach out to the, uh, I mentioned last time, the Coastside um, uh, community orchestra and see if they're interested in partnering on that and maybe more than once like maybe mm -hmm. you know the mm -hmm. last Sunday of each month in summer or something in the afternoon we have one. We certainly have lots of uh, bands on the coast as well. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah I, and I think acoustic there would be mm -hmm. lovely yeah. Yeah. and encourage people to walk and bring a chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bring My a husband chair. suggested that you know mm -hmm. people could ride their ride their bikes and the, the heel project that does the bike parking at the pumpkin festival maybe mm -hmm. could do a fundraiser for themselves and watch people's bikes, but so we'll, we'll continue to pursue that idea. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a, clearly something we want to work, work on. Um, I think I also had the dog training, and I um, was trying to think of a venue, and I thought about perhaps Burnham Strip, mm -hmm. as long as we could have it mowed. Mm -hmm. What I need to talk to people who train dogs about and do these classes is do they need a fence? Mm -hmm. um, uh, because there's obviously no fence for the bad dogs. <laughs> but I thought it would be interesting to ask somebody if they're willing to do um, a training class for specifically families. So it's like parents yeah, and that's, kids that's together doing, yeah, uh, you know, right. learn to train and manage their dog and not just uh, the adults and maybe yeah. a separate one for adults with no kids. It's a family, I have it as a family activity. Yeah. 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 
I do have a dog course. Course. I'm, I, I don't know. I thought I would just put out on next door if somebody is interested. Uh, that would be fair because there's a lot of dog trainers on the coast. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, know, yeah. you want to invite all the fairy godmothers. You might have to rotate amongst them. Yeah. And that would be cool because yeah. then they would get exposure. Yeah. Well, I thought also they may be willing to do it in their own venue. Um, right. So, mm -hmm. but once I sort of crystallized the idea of focusing on a, a class for families with kids and parents together, then I'll socialize on next door and see. Can you, can't you do that at Quarry Park? I might need to go through the twelve oh. documents that I've gotten from Quarry <laughs> Park to find out. Which would be so more familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So might, Nancy, might thank you so much for volunteering so those to be a concert organization and a dog training class. <laughs> <laughs> park. Well, I have a third one as long as I'm volunteering. Okay. Um, and it was on the idea of the history and nature walks. As Gail made the comment last time, that there are a number of people who are happy to do those sorts of walks. Mm -hmm. And I thought those are something that maybe March through November. So every other month, March, May, July, mm -hmm. September, November, we could put a schedule out and and just alternate the various people who like to do those sorts of things. Michelle, you are near the yacht club. You think you could talk with them about a sailing youth sailing program? Or, you know, in coordination with them. Well, we have a full youth sailing program already. Yeah, right? So but people but again, are welcome we, to. Yeah. People are welcome. I, they're booked. You know, I mean, they're, they're booked for the whole summer, so people are welcome to sign up. But I don't see there's any need to partner with you guys other than through advertising, perhaps. Well, we do do something called a. Uh, it's kind of like a small boat open house. It's, it's sort of our gateway to get people. Mm -hmm. And we have all the small boats in the water and people and their families, they, they come and that's for free. Um, but in terms of further coordination, I mean, you can talk to them yourself, but I you know, was pretty deeply involved with the organization. They're already a turnkey operation with their own instructors and their own following. Well, that's the situation with all, of, all the charge programs. They have an instructor already. They have an own program. We are piggybacking with them. This is what Pacific does. This is what Happen Bay does. Is they find an instructor for a program, and then that. But program. our boats are all filled. I mean, there isn't any more capacity for more classes. I mean, we have an instructor. We have a. Um, we have like twelve kids, um, in in the course per week. And at at this point in time, there is no capacity for a for, a, for yeah. people to sail in the summer, of nineteen. They will, we will, they will put out their own advertising. You can put out the advertising if you have, like, you know, a catalog or something like that. But they're not going to involve themselves in any other way other than that. I mean, if you want to give them exposure, I mean, people from around here can go. I'm not sure what you want from them other than they're already Just offering. be able to say there's there's XYZ dates that are available yeah. and they're... Sure, that, that's not going to be decided until probably... Okay, so uh, <coughs> would you reach out to them to see what we want to do is we're going to brand a week sailing camp, just like we have surfing camp, uh, <coughs> a number of surfing camp providers. They do their thing. We don't provide the instruction. We don't provide even a location. So they would get out of it simply the extra advertising. They get extra advertising, and we have uh, a view from the community that we're trying to do something. I think, I mean, because I work with um, two of the three, there's three surfing, there's Tommy Tsunami, there's Open uh, Surf Swim, no, Open Surf, and then there's Tim West's thing. So it's really hard to choose one of those to support. And so I think it's just better that, you know, if you have a web page of activities, you say, okay, here's the Yacht Club sailing program, here's Tommy Tsunami, here's the three. And I probably wouldn't <coughs> include Open Surf because he's actually not from here. He's from to support our local vendors. I would, yeah, I would just support the local vendors by getting it out there, you know, on another platform. Um, again, I, I guess I have a little bit of a different opinion on that. Um, it's just not traditionally done, where you list all the potential people who have that service in the community. You negotiate with the provider. You get the best possible price, the best possible terms, and then you list a date, not all dates. Um, so they're a contractor to the district uh, for a certain time period and certain. But then you're going to take a cut, just like Parks and Recs does. We're not talking about taking a cut. It's not the money making. It's, we're, it's, we're not it's, it's Parks and Recs. They put out a catalog, you know, and it costs money to put the catalog out. So 
the vendors all, that's the business model there, is all the vendors, if I, they wanted me to teach first day, but then they wanted to take a cut. And I said, I got my own place to teach first day, I don't need you. Okay, so, <coughs> to back up. We would put it in our new We are not, we are having a, we are not having a catalog. That's too much for right now. Mm -hmm. So there's, that cost is gone. We were talking about having it on a website, the district website, mm -hmm. um, and that um, there would be a flyer put up around the community that says, go to the website for these kinds of classes, these kinds of opportunities. But we're not, we're not doing that. We don't have the budget to do a, a, catalog, a printed catalog. Uh, but uh, well, I wouldn't even recommend a printed one anyway. I think it's, I think it's ridiculous that we still print yeah. one down in half the day. Okay, but I'm just giving you the background. And so um, uh, that's what meetings with Dahlia and I have come up with so far seems to work for Dahlia and the district. Um, and they're willing to support, uh, she is willing to support, the rest of it has to be approved by the board. Uh, so uh, I think we have a method of getting, identifying programs and instructors and dates and have, working with them to collaborate on a service to the community. Um, we have a way of promoting that. We will have a way of promoting that. And we do have the daily's initial model on, on having a way to uh, pay for that. Again, the cost of the website is no cost to the district. I guess I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is if you try to promote just one week out of the seven for the Half and Big Alcove Sailing Program, that won't work for us. Because we sell all of the weeks. Do you do, do you connect? I, I ran a sailing program for 12 years, mm -hmm. youth sailing program. Um, so you do the same thing to a different group of kids every week, right? We do what? You do the same instruction to a different group of kids every week. Yes. So that's what it's we're not, talking well, about. They're not always different. We often have kids that go for four, four months at a time. Okay. But in theory, it's the same program every month. So every every week. So all we want is just a week. That well, you can, you can, can talk to them about that. I mean, I, okay. I, I, mean I, I know the program. But I'm just trying to tell you right now that that's not the kind of thing that really works for us. Because mm -hmm. that will just crowd one week. It'll break up the flow of the families who come in for three or four weeks. All of a sudden, we've got one week that's completely blocked. Okay, we'll look for that. But if you, but if you're advertising our whole program, the people will spread out. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wait, I don't understand. How about why it you? Has to be how one about week. you and I go and meet with them? You want to do that? No. Okay, I will do it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Another one is use of special needs. Uh, that's for Bay Area outdoor, uh, outdoor Recreation Program. It's great. They have a whole fleet of adaptive bicycles. I've worked with them before in San Francisco. Um, uh, there's a small cost. Uh, whether the district would cover that cost, I'm not sure. So that we can offer it for free. Um, but I will, I'm willing to take that on. Um, Surf camp. Um, we have a number of, as was mentioned, a couple of people there who would like to uh, work with and get a contract from a uh, bids from the local. I'm happy to do that. Okay, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, one of the again, these these are programs that in my <coughs> discussions with recreation districts. Uh, in Pacifica, Half Moon Bay, and Over the Hill, these are programs that have been very popular, um, and we have a good chance of having them uh, fill. Uh, there is a contractor company who offers a youth skateboard lesson. So this is street skateboarding with a strong safety emphasis. <coughs> All the kids have to wear helmets. Uh, you know, how, and, and the last part of it, the last part of it is uh, they get to bring their skateboards and they create art on their skateboards. So they provide the facility, they provide the materials to paint and so forth and uh, work with kids. So I have a great provider, he's already identified, you know, he comes with good recommendations from other districts. 
Let me explain what I mean by top lot jumpers. Again, this is an outlandishly popular program in other, two other communities I talked to. Uh, this is geared towards families and tots. Uh, a lot of nannies, a lot of young moms, uh, dads. Uh, at, for instance, Burnham Strip, where we have some parking and some space, mm -hmm. not on the medians. Um, two mornings in the summer, the district would pay for the inflatable um, the jumpers. Bouncy houses. houses. Yeah. And uh, they would be free, and uh, they're, that's an incredibly popular event for, for uh, young, young parents and, and the kids. Wind. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, does somebody want to try that, organizing that? Does somebody else want to? I'm a little concerned about the breeze on the Burnham Strip, because mm -hmm. they do launch. Yeah. yeah. You got to tie them down. Every now and then, then somebody yeah. has one in Cory, but it's a little bit more sheltered in Cory than on other streets. We don't need to have Burnham Strip. We could have it. And again, uh, I, if somebody wants to investigate those things, uh, I would love it. Yeah, that probably would be pretty, I mean, there's a local provider for that. Yes. And, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to take that on? Yeah, sure. All right, yeah. Paul. And then I had previously... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was, I had previously volunteered to uh, look for a soccer provider, mm -hmm. I remember. And, um, and then okay. also the heel camp too. What's the heel camp? It's the farm camp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Over there in um, yeah. Uh, outside of Cooper Ridge. Just background on the soccer. Uh, there are four, three or four camps already in the summer by other providers. So for instance, uh, uh, Wilkinson. Yeah. Has, I okay. Yeah. I I didn't. That was just on the list, and I had volunteered. So that's fine. I. Yeah, again, I Wilkinson School has a great program. Yeah, no, that's, I, I'm, I wasn't trying to champion it. I was just trying okay. to fill the okay. need. So, okay. yeah. So if you can work with Heal, you want to try that? Yeah, yeah, that would actually be, that would be real easy. And that's a little bit older age group, so that's even better. So a little older age kids. Okay. Yeah, I don't, it's pretty, you know, typically pretty young. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it's just a unique program. It's good. Okay, Paul, well, I've got you down for the dot lot jumpers and heel yeah. camp. Okay, <laughs> dog training, Nancy, uh, guided hikes with Rancho Corral del Tierra National Park Service. I have many, many contacts there, so mm -hmm. I will take that on. Uh, seniors, uh, we have senior co siders in Half Moon Bay, and they they do use a facility there. Um, what's the community center? Good Adcock. Yeah, Adcock Center. So the idea would be, do we want to have something locally working with them? Now they provide transportation down there, uh, all kinds of things. So it's something that, you know, it would be providing it locally, not so much in that Fran, uh, there was something that Fran had volunteered to mm. do the follow-up mm. on, and it might have been this. Okay. Is it envisioning doing it here in this room? Probably. Mm -hmm. Small number of people in this room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will contact Fran to see if she's interested uh, in organizing that. Um, being going over to uh, card games are wildly popular mm -hmm. and other in Pacifica and with seniors. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we want to organize that. I mean, this might be a nice casino location. <laughs> Joy, you have limited tables. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tell me you want to try to organize that? Hi, you know what I would like to do, and Delia and I haven't had a chance to get together and test these out, but we had talked about finding a way to, once we have a list mm -hmm. of just doing a like finger on the pulse on how much interest is there in the list that we think we can do. Mm -hmm. and, and Somebody suggested to me that we look at the um, next door poll capability. You know, where mm -hmm. you just click on yeah. it and mm -hmm. and yeah. we just run that a few times. So that's it's the it's the senior things that I I'm not I'm not as confident. But where we did classes, that's what we did get pulled for last summer. Mm -hmm. The walks got the the most pulled, mm -hmm. but we had one 
person for yoga, one person one for mountain biking, no people for that. Yeah, but look, at, look, we only had two or three weeks before we had launched. Didn't it. Well, some of them were, it was a couple months before some of those. Yeah, yeah, later in the summer, but, yeah. but uh, promotion we got and it was really marginal. Yeah, we promoted a lot yeah. more weekend. Again, and I was looking at, I was in touch with the directors at Pacifica and Half of Bay, and what do they fill and have overflow? Mm -hmm. And so that's what a lot of these are uh, related to. Ballroom dancing, as an example, um, in this room, there's not enough space. We have to get the community room mm -hmm. at, the, at the school. Yeah. Uh, coastal Elbow Hikes, we do have someone hurt mm -hmm. locally who's interested in that. But she, she did it free for us once. <laughs> and we had four people come. I'm not sure I'd get her to do well, it for free for us again. This is correct. Oh, oh, oh. This, the this, uh, guy. talked about it. So, um, History Walk, we've got that covered. So, I'm looking at uh, if someone would like to volunteer uh, about organizing one of the other ones. Coastal Edibles, Hike, Ballroom Dancing, now they're out of school. Uh, we're going to ask Fran to do the Zumba Gold for seniors. Um, that's that's the only other one that is on this list. So this list is not comprehensive, and if, if anybody is interested in trying something else, that's great. You know, uh, you could just have to organize it yourself. Could just call out to providers on next door. Yeah, um, yes, but is that really well, something that would fill? You get a smattering of, of people who are interested in trying to fill a class. They're looking for exposure. Mm -hmm. I know somebody who does a coastal edible class. Great. Uh -huh. okay. Is that not Suzanne? Do you want to? Elliot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, she, she charges $20 a person. Yeah. We had uh, Kurt, who's the other person, um, I have his contact information. We couldn't get him. The timing didn't work out for last year, but mm -hmm. he's very interested in doing it. Um, so the Voyager, the um, Forager guy. Forager guy. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's there's tons of people out. Right. So we can put. I, I would prefer to have because we can't do a lot. Ellie and I we can't do a lot. We just don't have the bandwidth as, as staff or as volunteers. We learned that the, the person who mm -hmm. chooses to organize them has to really have to do promotion for a yeah, few right. weeks ahead to yeah. Yeah. push yeah. interest. We so can we can't take on too much more. Well, That's I what I'm I saying. I, guess I don't understand the business model. I, I'm, I'm a business person. And I, I don't understand, um, we don't have that much money, we don't have that much time. We want to support local businesses, I'm assuming, as part of the model. Um, but. I, I, again, we get back to the Yacht Club thing. I know what the Yacht Club needs, you know, and they don't need help um, in that regard, in that way. Okay. Um, now, I did, as I've been thinking, they do do things on the weekends, which you'd be more open to. And those right. would be like two-day two camps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would be like a gateway. That, that I think, is in, in an arena for them. But, um, you know, I think you have to go to the business themselves, and that's why I was kind of saying, if you just put it out there, who's got a class that they want to teach? Um, those are the people that are hungry. I know Suzanne sells out her classes for the most part. She's yeah. got a following, and mm -hmm. you know I don't, I don't know if she needs help. Um, and the forager guy, his classes are always full. I see him down at the Yacht Club all the time with 20 and 30 people around him. So you know I'm so sure we give we give up on having any room. No, programs. what I'm saying is what those businesses need is they need exposure, and it would be very easy to expose them through GCSD. Um, for the for the ones who need exposure, but not all of them do. So you, no, the I'm not really just doing this to market businesses. This is also part of our, you know getting GCSD involved in the community. That's more. That's the primary goal. We're not here to advertise for businesses. I mean, that's great if there's a benefit on both ends. But should be. Well, I mean, uh -huh. in my mind, it's it's. I would focus on those things that save people from having to go to have, have Pacifica or Half Moon Bay. If there is enough interest mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to, to fill things locally. Mm -hmm. Well, what should we do? Um, mm -hmm. I'm willing to, uh, on the 17th board meeting, January 17th mm -hmm. board meeting, to present a list of potential ideas mm -hmm. uh, for programs uh, mm -hmm. to, 
to the board. Um, if you have any other ideas, please shoot them to me. I know a Lego lady. This room would be okay for Legos. <laughs> yeah, Debbie. Uh, Legos. Yeah, there's a company that does Lego building, but you know what? The Wilkinson already has a Lego program, a Lego camp. They already have a science camp. But only Wilkinson kids go there. Uh, they have no, it's open to the community. They have been the de facto recreation district for oh, this see. area for years. But they are only limited to kids their age. So the rest of the community hasn't had any um, Okay, so unless we have anything else that you all want to add, I'm going to move forward with this list. We'll cross off a few things. We'll, we've tweaked. Thank you, Mission. Michelle, you know, a two-day is better than a week-long camp. We got that. It took me a while to get that. Um, but, you know, uh, I'll get back to all of you with who volunteered and corral you into doing the organizing for that event. And, and my goal has always been that, you know, February 1st, we have a newsletter out with all the programs listed. We start promoting. We have a long time to Okay. Great. Uh, see, we're, we're moving right along. Uh, next PAC meeting, we've already, that's item number six, we've already identified that. And the next PAC meeting is? When? For uh, February, February 4th. February 4th, right. Okay, so that's our last agenda item. Do you have anything else, many members, you'd like to add? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so please put down uh, those dates. And we are adjourned. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Chris. Thanks for watching. You could have been here at the last meeting. Yeah. I know. I just. No, I'm sorry. No, there could have been a fight. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time.